So if we go to policies here, we can create a new policy for deploying out updates. So there's a couple different ways we can structure this particular process. I can say I want to do all of my patches. I can say I want to do matching filters. I can do selected. Some people will do all. They might target this for workstations. They do all Windows updates, all third-party patches, just push them all out. Most people, though, are going to be using matching filters. So through matching filters, through our policy section here, we're able to create some different structures that target the kind of patches we want to access um, pretty easily. So I could add a filter in here. I could say I want to target an update source, say Windows mandatory updates, Windows optional updates. And I could just push this out to my endpoints as needed. Now, some people might want to come in here and say, you know, there's actually certain kinds of updates I want to exclude. So you can build in exclusions as well. So I could say exclude drivers. And I also want to exclude upgrades. Maybe I don't want the Windows 11 upgrade just yet. And you could have a policy right here that you could automate and that pushed out on a regular basis. Now, if I want, I could also include third party applications. I could even say, you know, there's certain vendors. A um, common example I give is Java. Um, back in my days as a system administrator, there was an accounting application that hated a certain vision of, version of Java. So we just had to just basically wait until the vendor said, okay, you're okay to upgrade. So we would exclude Java. You could do it that way. And of course, you can do things based off name and severity as well. There's options here. But the idea is, is that you can really build out these filters to update based off your own terms and what your environment calls for. You can do so with names that support wildcards and the like as well. Now, you have two options once you build your filter. You can automate this rollout. Um, so you can say, you know, hey, I want to take anything that meets this criteria, push it through so many days after an application's released. And the reason why we do this is it gives you the ability to have a bit of a buffer, right? It allows for a greater level of automation. I could make a policy that applies to a test group of endpoints and say, don't wait any days, wait zero days. I want to install right away because I want to make sure I'm testing my endpoints against these patches and make sure that they don't run into any issues. You could then take this exact same policy, create a copy of it, and say, install seven days after release. And you're more or less giving yourself a bit of a buffer window for you to evaluate your test results, right? You can also, if you want, say, hey, you know, I like this filter. It's good as a backdrop, but I want to have a little more granular control of my patching. I want to do things in a manual method. And that's where update approval comes in. So if I go here to update approval, I'm going to actually see the patches that are available for my endpoints. And I can approve or decline. So I can say, yes, I approve this patch. No, I decline. And with my policy configured the way that I had it, shown prior where it only goes off manual approval, unless I go into here and say yes or no, the system's not going to apply those patches. It's going to sit in a state of limbo. But if I say approve, it's going to apply the ones I specify, or I can just not push out the ones that I choose by saying decline. So you have a lot of control in that particular type of situation. Now, if we go back to a policy, we'll take one that's already existed. We can talk about you know, reboots as well. Um, action one, we allow you to customize a message to show the user in regards to a patching policy. And you can also change how long the user has until they have to perform a reboot. By default, it's an hour. You can move up to 10 if you want. You can do you know, 100 minutes. You can do really whatever you want there based off your organizational needs. Um, it's up to you. We also have another configuration setting here where you can turn off automatic Windows updates and just basically have Action 1 take control of that particular process. The idea is that Action 1 is then fully in charge of the update process, and you're not going to get any more random updates coming through from Windows. From there, you choose your endpoints you want to target. Action 1 does allow for group creation. We can discuss on that as well. Um, we could have a test group. We could target servers. And you can really kind of create these policies to target whatever systems make the most sense to you. And say next, and then I can choose how often I want to run this particular process. So if I choose, I could say weekly. Right now, it's set for Monday, and Friday um, at 11 a.m. And then, you know, if I say, okay, actually, I want to change that Sunday, or I can monthly and say every second Tuesday, 
there's a lot of options we can work with here to kind of structure out this particular policy to meet my needs. So you have plenty of options there in regards to that creation process.